Magic is very real and it wants to make itself known. When that happens, the familiar world becomes strange and dangerous. Beyond the veil of the mundane is where monsters lie in wait. Hi, I'm your host, Garrett K. Jones, and this month for Author Awareness, I'm interviewing urban fantasy author Luke Partridge. Hey, happy Saturday, everybody. I'm two weeks into my commitment to No Shave November. So far, the beard isn't really beardy. I'm just looking a little scruffy looking. Who's scruffy looking? Anyway, thank you for those of you who are or have already donated. I really appreciate your help with raising money for cancer awareness and research. Just remember that as a sort of contest, whomever donates the most money gets to decide what I do with all this glorious facial hair. Now, if you haven't already donated and would like to, you can click on the link down in the description box and get started. Also, the merch store is up and running on Teespring. Just so you are aware, I am doing a giveaway. The prize is this glorious looking poster signed by yours truly. If you want to win, it doesn't cost you anything. If you follow the link in the description, you can sign up for the contest, and when I hit 200 subscribers on YouTube, I will announce the winner. The fastest way to help me do that is to snap a picture of you wearing or using an item from the merch store, tag me on Instagram and Twitter, at GKJ underscore publishing, and use the hashtag Five Kingdoms Merch. Before going any further with the video, be sure to subscribe and click the bell icon for notifications on new videos. You can select notifications for all videos, or you can select notifications based on your preferences. If you're watching on your phone, be sure to update those settings inside the app itself to get the most out of your viewing experience. All right, let's get into this month's interview. This interview is a change to the schedule. Originally, I was supposed to have India native Samir Saxena on the show, and he informed me that he was unable to do the interview. Fortunately for both you and myself, my friend Luke Partridge, an author from the UK, was willing and able to do the interview on the spur of the moment. Luke was actually featured in three episodes of the most recent season of my podcast, Storytellers. He had two of his own short story urban fantasy pieces featured as standalone episodes, and he and another author, Marcus McKinley, joined me for the season finale on the podcast for a writer's roundtable discussion. Now, if you want to check out those episodes, I will link them in the description. Hey, Luke, thanks for joining me. Tell me about your work. What do you write? Hi, Garrett. Thanks again for having me. And as always, it's a pleasure being here. And thank you. Although my name is pretty common, it comes from the Latin word Lucania. Yes, Latin. We have talked about my obsession with Latin and how much I use it in books that I write. Lucania means light, or bringer of light. That, or it comes from another name, Lucas, which came from Lucius, meaning the bright one, or the one born at dawn. Sorry, I went into a whole etymology lesson there. That's the writer and word nerd in me coming out. That said, there's something to say for where names originate from, and how writers use that in stories. Okay, I'm kind of getting sidetracked on this now. Back to the more important things, right? I currently have two novels published, and an anthology that's on its way. It should be seen online and available to buy before Christmas, so keep your eyes out for it. The two novels I have published are Blood Oath and Blue Moon. Both are part of the Alex Winter series which is the main series I'm currently writing. Both Alex Winter books fall under the genre of urban fantasy, which is, for those who are not aware of it, it's magic in a modern age, sometimes mixed with elements of crime or thriller, which I have sprinkled into my novels. 
Urban fantasy isn't the only genre I write, though. As with the anthology, tall tales, short stories, and roadside reveries, I branch into fantasy, which is where I started my journey of writing, uh, crime, general fiction, and horror. You can probably guess that I like expanding my repertoire and trying new things. So how did you get into writing? Was it something that you discovered as a recent talent, or was this something that you've always wanted to do? I started writing from a very young age, which was probably to do with the fact that I had the privilege to be surrounded by books and got to read such wonderful adventures and tales. I think I was about 11 or 12 when I started writing my first book. And no, it wasn't an Alex Winters book, surprisingly. Uh, they came much later down the line. This was a fantasy novel, heavily inspired by the likes of Final Fantasy games, anime, and now that I'm older, and can look back on these things, I'd probably add in the show The Tenth Kingdom to the list of inspirations for that book. You probably know the base of this story. Heroes from another world, tyrannical government, ancient and hidden magic, there to save the day. A general staple for all fantasy novels, and probably the most cliche of them all. At the time, I don't think I knew that I wanted to write as a job or even as a career. I think I was just trying to write something that I would like to read and pay homage to the things that I loved as a kid. It wasn't until I was doing my A-levels, which for everyone who's not British, is between secondary school and university. So between the ages of 16 and 18 years old, that I started writing almost every day and tried to make something out of what I was working on. Um, this is about the time that I started sharing this with friends, family members, and tried to get input and feedback on my work. Uh, it's kind of when I stopped seeing this as a hobby and something that I actu actually wanted to pursue uh, as something that I could get paid for. Uh, even then, it wasn't until a few years into my job as working as a technician for a music university that the idea of Alex Winters came to me. From then it was a roller coaster. It was almost like I couldn't not write this series, like I was compelled to do it. Then came 2016 where Blood Oath was officially put on the market and could be read by the world. What are some of your inspirations as a writer? Do you draw from film, music, nature, art, etc. I think like many other writers, there are countless authors and creators that have inspired my work. And although it's almost cliche at this point, because everyone says it, but I really do get inspired by everything around me and the media I consume. Looking out my window to the autumnal trees gave me the perfect visual and inspiration for a segment in one of my short stories that is a part of my anthology. Uh, watching ARGs, or Augmented Reality Games, uh, which is a long explanation of what these are, but I'll shorten it to it's a interactive networked narrative using platforms like YouTube, Instagram, Facebook, and the like, where the audience interacts in a way and becomes part of and progresses the narrative of the story being told. It's not the best explanation, but if you look into channels like Marbled Hornet, Tribe 12, and Everyman Hybrid, you'll get an understanding of what I'm talking about. So it's a bit of a long-winded statement of me saying these things taught me to subvert and change audience perspective on things. Music lyrics have also influ influenced sections of my book and even inspired short stories from me. Um, one of them being the first story in my anthology, Somewhere in Time. So yes, you could say that I gain inspiration from a lot of things. What has been the hardest part or biggest challenge in the creation of your work? This is such a good question. I don't know if this would be considered as an unorthodox answer, but the self-doubt during a first draft. I've talked about this before, that I do a lot of planning in advance when it comes to my work to make sure that I hit the story beats that I want. That doesn't mean that everything is set in stone. 
The problem stems from the fact that I'm writing it and I know what will happen next and where it's going to end, which makes me doubt my plot twists or reveals and things like that. My brain doesn't take into account that not everyone thinks the same way that I do, and coming into stories without all the knowledge that I have on them, uh, the readers would see it differently. Not to mention there are other things like imposter syndrome, but I don't think I'm the only one who suffers with that. Past that, and writing wise, it's probably keeping everything coherent and consistent. With my Axe Winter series, because of how many novels I have in mind, not to mention short stories and the like, making sure I'm consistent in everything can be a bit of a challenge. I won't lie, I have a cheat sheet document in my Alex Winters folder. Everything from spell names, because I use Latin for those, quick references for characters and creatures in the world, and anything that I think will come up again because flipping through a 250 page manuscript to find out what drink a character's usual is, isn't fun. And yes, I'm talking from experience. If you could give any advice to other would-be authors out there, what would you say to them? Write for whatever reason fuels you. If you're doing it as a hobby, and you're just writing for fun, that's great and absolutely valid. If you're writing to be a commercial success and to make lots of money, just as great, just as valid. I've known a lot of writers who are embarrassed to say that they write for money because they don't want to be known as so-called sellouts. None of that stuff actually matters. Write for you and write for the reasons that you want to write. Nothing's going to change that. Keep all pieces of work you've done. Don't delete it or throw it away, even if you hate it. I've had days where I've gone back and reread old pieces of work and although cringe-worthy in sections, they had good ideas. They were just poorly executed. You never know what will give you the spark for something new. One of the stories in my anthology is actually a combination of multiple stories I started when I was younger and left alone for years. The same goes for drafts. Create a new file for your second draft, for your third draft, and so on. That way, you can see where you've made changes and how your writing has changed. Do your research this is important. If you're doing something like crime fiction, talk to officers in the local police departments. Go out there and make some contacts in the world that you're writing in. It's a little harder to ask a dragon whether it's a gland in their body that emits flame, or whether it's like a gas and there's like a flint effect in the back of their throat that creates fire. You can take creative control and ignore certain information from, for personal reasons, and how you want your story to flow. We do mention that, especially if you've talked to professionals and credited them in the book. And finally, because I cannot stress this enough, back up your work. In multiple different places. I have Google Drive, USBs, hard drives, emails, and full draft printouts, although they're generally just first drafts, most writers have had a moment where they've lost their work due to technological failures. So unless you write everything out and keep everything on notebooks, back it up. Also, don't throw away the notebooks. A big thank you goes to Luke for his participation in this author awareness interview. Now, if you want to get copies of his books, both titles in his Alex Winters series are available on Kindle and paperback on Amazon. The link is down in the description box. If you want to connect with Luke through social media, you can find all of those connections through his link tree. Also, check out some of the other short stories featured on my podcast, which is called Storytellers. All links are down in the description below. Hey, thanks for watching. Please make sure to like, share, and subscribe because that is how this channel is going to grow its viewership, if you're able to do so. Please consider becoming a channel supporter by clicking the link down in the description box and heading over to patreon.com slash gkjpublishing where you will have access to four support tiers of one, three, five, and twenty dollars. Each tier comes with sweet perks, so please make sure to check them out. Don't forget about the new merch store where you can choose from a variety of t-shirts and other products with the cover art from my books. 
Lastly, connect with me on Instagram and Twitter at GKJ underscore publishing, where you can tag me with pics of you wearing or holding the merch with the hashtag Five Kingdoms Merch. And I will see you guys back here next week for Creator's Corner, where I'll be discussing line edits. The vlog of the Five Kingdoms is filmed without the use of a live audience at Skyrocket Studios in Hanford, California. We can't do what we do without your help, so please make sure to subscribe by clicking the button that's above my head, and make sure to watch and share the videos over here to my left. Have a great week.